Hey guys, I hope you had a fantastic week making great music and you also could use some inspiration from my videos. You know, I've always asking you to ask, ask, ask questions and I really mean it because I really love answering all of the questions you have, whether be it via email, in the comment section here on YouTube, on Facebook, Instagram, it really doesn't matter. And while I find it interesting chatting with all of you guys uh, about those questions, I thought to myself, why not doing a Q&A show out of that? So that uh, you all could benefit from that. So here it is, Paul House Q&A, with a couple of questions that you might find interesting. So I'd like to do this every month or so, so please send me everything you'd like to know about mixing, mastering, producing, recording, the music business in general. You could even send me a short video of your question, which I can put up here. And uh, we can talk further here in the comment section, since I can't wait to hear your thoughts about the questions. So um, for now, enough talking, let's get right to the first question. So the first question comes from Stefan. He would like to know, uh, why did you use several EQs instead of only one, including all the settings? And why did you use two limiters, L2 and Maximizer from Isotope? You know, Stefan, this is a huge question. I find that I often get better results by not letting one EQ limiter or compressor do the heavy lifting, but use those processors in a more subtle way. So that's why you might see me using two of them. Besides, when you get to know your tools, which I find especially important, rather have less plugins on your computer, you might see that they all have different strength and a different character to them. That's why I often use a different EQ for the high frequencies than for the mid frequencies, for example, when I'm trying to boost them, that is. I hope that uh, answers your question. So second question comes from Shawane Cohen's he writes, hey fam, I would want to know how to mix female backup harmonies, like what is found in reggae songs. First of all, thank you for your question. Uh, in general, I would say um, use panning to separate the background vocals from the lead vocals. For example, if you have four tracks of background vocals, uh, two doubles in most cases, try to pan the first two doubles minus 60 to the left and to the right, the next doubles minus 50 to the left and the right, and so on. If there are more than that, continue with minus 40 left and right and so on. This will give you wide background vocals with a lot of separation from the lead vocals. Also using reverb on the background vocals is not a bad idea. You know, the more reverb you use, the more will the vocals be shifted to the background. Also try to EQ them differently. Background vocals don't have to be that thick and big. I hope that answers your question. Okay, the next question comes from Aleko Beats and he says, uh, thank you for your uploads, very helpful. Wish I could reach your level of mixing. By the way, is that Reaper you're working in? Also, is there anything on your master channel? Okay, Aleko Beats, uh, I'm not a Reaper user, although I heard good things about it. Actually, I started mixing in Logic, then switched over to Studio One, which I find much more intuitive for editing, and I get faster workflow. However, um, I still use Logic for producing, since I really like its features, like the built-in uh, synth, drama, the MIDI effects, which I'm so used to and um, don't want to switch at the moment. As for the master channel, I only have some analyzers on there, a VU meter and Magic AB, where you can easily compare your mix uh, with other commercial releases. You really just need one click for that. The overall processes are on my mix bus, which is another huge topic, which I can cover another time. Okay, next question comes from the Victor Music. Uh, thanks again for all the pretty nice questions you have. So he writes, uh, Paul, greetings. You said you mostly use delays to create death on instruments. Are you using 1 16th slap? Also, I think I heard you say your drums are centered. Does this mean all drum elements? Do you pan the chords and strings? Yeah, I'm really not that reverb guy, so I just use it very sparsely or if I want to generate some kind of effect. You could use delays to create depth and perspective. Not only 1 16th uh, delays, but often pan delays. For example, if your instrument is panned to the left, try to pan the delay to the right and vice versa uh, with another instrument. Great stereo image, I'll tell you. Uh, about panning, I always have my snare drum, kick drum and bass in the center. Other drum kit elements such as shakers, hi-hats, etc. I really try it out for the specific song. 
if it works when I pan them or not. But you should give it a try, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, the same goes for chords and strings. And here goes the last question for today uh, from DV Records Jamaica. And he is asking, hey Paul, I have a question about reverb again. Why not use a single reverb on all instruments but with different pre-delays? Wouldn't using a single reverb gel the sound rather than use multiple, which will separate the elements? I'm confused as it relates to this. In fact, I know some engineers who put the same small reverb on all elements of the track to gel them together. This really is a well-known technique from back in the days, but for me it makes the mix more washy and I would lose clarity. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, uh, but it never really worked for me. As I said earlier, I'm not a big reverb user anyway. Instead I'm using mix bus compression, for example, to glue the elements together. But hey, just give it a shot and see if it works for you. Nobody will be harmed. Okay people, that was it for the first episode of the Q&A show. I hope you could pick up some techniques or inspiration. For the next show, I'm relying on you. Send me your questions via email, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter using the hashtag Paulhouse Q&A. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and spread the word. See you next time.